Hi, my name is Dr. Rayshon Ray, aiming to speak truth to power, and this is my daily thought. Why is voting for Trump like voting against your humanity? Why is voting for Trump like voting against all marginalized people, which mostly means we're voting against ourselves and our own interest? I mean, we simply just have to look over the past couple of years. What we've seen is Trump talk about military soldiers. And in that regard, he's talked about POWs, Senator John McCain in particular, which is highly problematic. We've heard him make <clears throat> make extremely uh, derogatory and sexist comments toward women. We've heard him talk about people who are disabled, making fun of them um, in front of an audience, um, acting as if. He has some type of mental or physical disability. He's talked about black people. He has suggest suggested that we need to further implement stop and frisk, even though it's been found to be um, unconstitutional and something that targets African-Americans and Latinos. Um, when it comes to Latinos and immigrants, he tends to think that all immigrants are brown and seems to, seems to not necessarily view people such as his wife or other Europeans as being immigrants. Um, he's even talked about uh, American born Latinos, such as the judge, and stated that he needed to go back to Mexico as if he wasn't born in the United States. He's called poor people dumb. I mean, every marginalized group you could possibly think about, he's talked about in a very negative way. Uh, but there's one group, uh, actually two, that he hasn't really, three, to tell you the truth, that he hasn't really even demeaned to tell you the truth. The first group, is the KKK and white nationalist and the alt right? He'll just say, "Oh, I, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't support what they say." But he never denounces it. He never says that that is wrong, that they're racist. I mean, so we really have to think about what's going on. And when we think about the alt right, they are really viewing Trump as their savior. They're viewing, they're viewing Trump as someone who can come and do some things for them um, that's going to help further further their particular movement. In that regard, it's very similar to Hitler um, in the 1930s. Um, you know, you know the, the, the other group that we see is really supporting him are Russians. I mean, he talks about Vladimir Putin like Vladimir Putin is Caesar. I mean, in that regard, I mean, definitely something is going on there. And that's highly, highly problematic, particularly when we think about the links between the alt-right um, Trump and Russia and the Russians. I mean, so, so we have to think about all of this together. And then the third group, that he mostly supports is the top 1%. And that's because in many respects, he's simply supporting himself. And so what he's been able to do is to implement um, Nixon's Southern strategy. And in that regard, he's getting um, mostly um, poor and working class whites to vote against their own self-interest. And instead of necessarily looking to see what's going to benefit them as it relates to jobs, as it relates to health care, I mean, we have to think we are on a record number of weeks and months with um, unemployment decline and job increases. But no one's talking about that. No one's talking about the fact that uh, President Obama has one of the highest ratings of any president going out of office. Because what well, the thing that we don't really realize is that President Obama inherited the Great Recession. He did not create it. But people think that he actually did create it. And so these are some of the problems that we see. And so the big thing that I hear people talking about with Trump is that, oh, he's going to bring businesses to the United States. In what world is that going to happen? I have, look, I have one of these dude's ties right here. What does that say? It says made in China. He's not thinking about you or your jobs. He's only thinking about himself. I mean, this dude hasn't paid taxes in 20 years. 20 years. What makes you think that he's going to create jobs? Instead, all he is is a master performer and a master enter entertainer. And because of that, he has you ignoring objective information. Don't let him play you as a fool. You're smarter than that. And so this is my ode to Trump supporters. And it's inspired by Pastor Martin uh, Nimoler, who wrote this around the time of the Holocaust. And this is my rendition of it. 
First, he came for the immigrants. But I did not speak out because I'm not an immigrant. Then he came for Latinos. But I did not speak out because I'm not Latino. Then he came for the blacks. Of course, you know, Trump calls, calls us the blacks. Then he came for the blacks. But I did not speak out because I am not one of the blacks. Then he came for the poor. But I did not speak out because I am not poor. Then he came for the disabled. But I did not speak out because I am not disabled. Part of coming for the disabled meant he also came for prisoners of war and military soldiers who have mental and physical health issues. But I did not speak out because I am not in the military. And then he came for women. And I did not speak out because I am not a woman. And then he came for me. And there was no one left to speak for me. So as we think about this upcoming election, we really have to think long and hard about the legacy that we're leaving for our children. And what this is going to mean for the United States by letting someone like a Donald Trump in office. So as always, conversations matter like Black Lives and Books. And I hope this is part one. Make sure you get one of those Trump ties made in China.